My name is Vargas and I've been, I'm a body painter. I've been doing this for about 23 years now. Um, I'm also a professional photographer that I've been doing this since 1989. And I started really putting together some brushes and things that I kind of feel the need to have them. And that's how I came up with the, the new Vargas line of brushes with Royal Atlantico. Uh, my career has taken over since then. I work in different movies, I've done a lot of productions, and I'm very proud to say that the brushes are good. And you know, it's just about, it's all about art and putting something together. Uh, well, I started when one day I decided to create this calendar, being a photographer for many years. And uh, one day I said, let's create a calendar that will bring a lot of people in and people will know my work. And unfortunately, I didn't sell that many. So what people started asking me was, you know, like, what happened? And I said, I don't know, what did I do wrong? I thought I did something wrong and I tried to fix it. And they said, Vargas, you know what happens is that people like to see flesh and flesh sells. So I said, okay, you want to see flesh? I'll show you flesh. I came up with my first calendar. And that calendar sold over 50,000 calendars in one month. So I kind of said like, okay, I think I found a niche. And I started working with body painting. And that's what really got me started. And now what I'll do is, not only I created the brushes, but I try to, I try to guide people to do this business wider than Where you can make money also, it's important. <laughs> Well, being a photographer, I think it was a great advantage. I've been doing photography for many years, and it does combine with body painting. And I think uh, by working this way, I kind of was more conscious about the lighting and the way to create advertisement, and it goes hand by hand, so like I said. And to me, yes, I do body painting worldwide to the point that it's been time not to do really my photography studio stuff. But I do apply it, and I photograph my own work. I teach people how to create amazing, stunning effects when it comes to body painting. It's a nice combination. I do still do a lot of a lot of catalog work and presentations and productions. But you know, I think uh, there's been a time for the past five years when I have not been able to stop, and we go country and country, which is a good thing, and I love it. Well, uh, as a business owner. Um, I feel very fortunate that we've been very busy, but it's uh, the key on this is to organize yourself. Sometimes what we do is, uh, I say most of the time, what we do is we plan three months ahead of where we're going to be. And this is great because not only your tickets are cheaper <laughs> when you go on the airplane, but also uh, it gives us an idea of what we're going to be, uh, you know, be against. Um, for instance, my wife and I, what we do, she's a makeup artist, so she will plan a trip and then I said, okay, if you want to do a trip for, for X and Y, Z makeup um, project, maybe I can teach a class in this bar and vice versa. So what we do is we plan ahead or, or, or whether it's a makeup or body paint workshops and it helps us in that way because we are getting to a point where, where we're running out of dates. Sometimes we say, okay, uh, December 2012 is full, let's start thinking about January, so why don't we go Asia this time? And we start putting that together. And that gives us time also to really dedicate some time to the studio in New York, because we, we have our, our academy in New York, and then we plan back and forth. Um, it's, being about it. it's about being organized. I always run out of ideas, but I think we all go through that. That's why we, we have all these things that we talk about, the inspiration folders about sources, and it's also good, um, I mean, we have the biggest advantage now, we can go online and we can start searching for uh, good ways of, of getting inspired. Every time you go to a, um, every time you go to, let's say, a gallery or, or exhibit, or sometimes when you don't have the time to do that, you just go on your laptop or your computer and start visiting some of these amazing websites where amazing photographers are there, and, uh, and get inspired from them. Get inspired from a nice pose, get inspired from a nice, um, show, those are the things that you go back and kind of create your own message. And to me, that's my m one of my inspirations. Or well, the second most inspiration, uh, the biggest inspiration that I have that I kind of uh, feel very comfortable is really working towards, um, in my case, for instance, I, I work towards animals and, and, and the, the preservation of, of animals in extinction and all these type of messages. So I'm always trying to put messages out there that not only keep me alive, but at the same time, it helps me be creative and bring the message that I want. Well, I get inspired by a lot of artists, but I like to go and always look into artists that have some real meaning in my life. Uh, as, an, as a fine artist, as, as an illustrator, I like to go back into 
fine artists like uh, Michelangelo and, uh, and everything about like what he did in the Sistine Chapel, the reason behind it. I like to find little stories, things that inspire me. But those are inspirations that help me understand the way that these particular artists saw the light, how they deal, dealt with the not just the lighting, but the, the texture. And those are things that I look forward, you know, the combination of colors, something that we, we're gonna talk more about it. And that's what inspired me, other artists. Advice, be consistent, be real, and overall, whenever you put together your work, keep in mind two things. One of them, you want it to be astonishing, but, I also, but that means your color has to be bright, and um, if it comes to, to really the way you paint, create your own style, you know. It's not bad to copy somebody else's style because everybody's gonna come up with different ideas. In my case, for instance, uh, I would teach you how to paint a flower, but you create your own garden, you know. And so if you can be creative, once you learn that technique, then come up with your own ideas. It's great to, to copy and learn. I do that with some of the work. I, I go and I, I make an amazing copy of this guy and I will spend hours to put it together. But it's how you apply that to your next job. I think um, I think all the support that I got in the past and being successful on what you do, it only means that you're doing something that people like. And, and that's exactly what we do because for me, it's about teaching you what people are gonna like to see from you, the way you present yourself, to create your portfolio, the way you photograph your work, the way people photograph your work. As an artist, you have the vision, so you have to bring the vision to the next person. So will they understand your work. Once they understand what you're trying to portray, that's when you really have accomplished a lot. So an advice will be, you want to make money, do what people like to see. And organize yourself to bring that to the level that people will respect you for. As an, as an artist, we have a responsibility to teach people how to do this and how to do it safe. There's so many products out there. There are like amazing companies that do these incredible colors. But you have to make sure, that number one, that they're safe. They're safe for the people that you're working with. Because those models, tomorrow, they're gonna have problems and skin problems if you don't. And being aware of all these things, as artists, we are responsible to teach people how to do this and how to do it the safe way. I know people that paint with acrylics. I've seen people that paint with regular paints. That's not the right way. As an artist, it's our job to come up and teach people how to do this. Yeah.